Werder Bremen, a former superpower of German football. However, Werder have not been living up to the history their club represents in the past few decades. Having last won the Bundesliga in the 2003-04 season, things have just been steadily decreasing and decreasing since then. A Europa League final appearance, which they ultimately lost, is the highlight of their recent history. But besides that, they have consistently been in a relegation battle. Last season, only avoiding relegation through the playoff match. But today, we look to put an end to this pain long term. We look to return Werder Bremen to the top of German football and to the top of European football. As today, we head to the Bundesliga and we rebuild Werder Bremen. But lads, if you do go on to enjoy today's rebuild and you're enjoying Rebuildmas as a whole, make sure you leave a like on the video. Also, if you guys are new around here, make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen a rebuild video in the past, here are the rules. The objective of the rebuilds are to win the UEFA Champions League final. All games in the rebuild are simulated. We cannot use the new jump in feature in rebuilds. The Champions League final, however, must be played. And of course, do not get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. There's the rules and objectives. Now it's time to jump into the rebuild. So this is the starting 11 that we do have here to kick off season number one at Werder Bremen. I mean, it's a mixed bag, isn't it? You've got decent players in there like Pavlenka, like Rashika, but there's a lot of youth players and a lot of older players as well. It's a real mixed bag. For me personally, I really want to focus on improving the defense because the defense is consistently average to lower rated and majority of the players in there are quite old as well. So new center back, new right back, Maybe even go for a new center midfielder later on in the window, but we'll suss it all out and see how we go. Someone I really want to grow during this rebuild as well, though, is Josh Sargent. I'm interested to see just how good we can get the American striker. Regardless, though, let's jump into the transfer window and see how we can begin life here at Werder Bremen. Kicking things off here with a player departure. Omer Toprak, the 30-year-old Turkish defender, staying in the Bundesliga but headed to FC Cologne here for 7.2 million pounds. Nicholas Fulkrug is also out of the club, off to Wolverhampton for £11.5 million. Pounds. And Nicholas Moisander, the Finnish defender, headed to La Liga, I believe, signing with Sadiz here for 920000 big ones. The clean out of Werder Bremen continues as Christian Gross is headed to AZ Alkmaar here for £910,000. And Yuyo Asako is headed to Royal Antwerp here, the Japanese centre forward signing there for three points. 5 million. Finally, though, we do make our first signing in charge of Werder Bremen. The Mr. Rebuild era at Werder Bremen begins with a right-back signing. It is Jorge Sanchez, the Mexican defender coming across here from Club America for 8.9 million pounds. Another player out of the club, though, Stefanos Capino, the Greek goalkeeper, headed to Southampton. And we have signed ourselves a new centre-back here for the starting 11. It is Felix Udekai, the German defender, makes the switch from Augsburg to Werder Bremen here. 12.9 million pounds for his services. And yet, we have decided to also upgrade at the central midfield role. It is Yves Basuma here, the midfielder from Brighton and Hove Albion, joining us here for 14 million pounds. Hopefully going to add a little bit more stability and a bit more youth to the starting 11. So there we go, lads. A very busy start to life at Werder Bremen. Three big additions to the starting 11 and a very, very intense clean out here of the side as well. Let's go see what the starting 11 is looking like. I'm interested though. I don't know what to expect from this first season. Hopefully, I mean, I would take a mid-table finish just trying to avoid relegation, really. So this is the starting 11 after the first transfer window. As you can see, Sargent and Agu already growing up a little bit. I have tried to put Agu. He's naturally a left back, but he can also play left midfielder. So I'm training him to become a left midfielder for the starting 11. But 
We're going to have a tough season ahead of us, surely. Going to need players like Rashika, like Eggstein, like Pavlenka to really step up for us. But let's go and suss out how we're doing here with Verd Bremen halfway through season one. So here we are, lads. January transfer window. Our first player departure is going to be for Kevin Mowald. We need to make some moves. I mean, we're in the middle of the relegation battle. If we're going to survive relegation this season, we need to have some big name additions to the squad. So Kevin Mowald is head to Getafe for 3.1 mil. And Milos Verkovic is headed to Istanbul to President's 11, signing there for 5.9 million pounds. And we have decided to part company with our defender, our right back here, Theodore Gebre Selassie is headed to start Rene for 2 mil. And that is going to see us make the signing of a new center defender. It's someone that can link up here with Utekai. It is Sebastian Bornau, the Belgian center back, joining us from Cologne for 12 million pounds. So there we go, lads. Bornau into the club. Hopefully that little bit of an improvement can help us survive the relegation battle this season. As you would have seen, we are in a bit of a scrap here. Fingers bloody crossed. We hold on here with Werder Bremen and see out season one. Lads, I don't know the last time this happened in a rebuild, but we have been relegated in season number one here with Werder Bremen. We have finished 17th in the Bundesliga. We're taking two steps back here and headed down to the second division. This is making this a rebuild like no other as we've been relegated with Werder Bremen. I mean, I'm trying to see the positives. I'm trying to see the upside about it. At least it's going to really help dynamic player potential because I expect us to have an absolute belter of a second season. So hopefully we can have some great performances on the park. But bloody hell, lads, we've been relegated. At the other end of the spectrum, however, it is Borussia Dortmund seeing out an absolutely thrilling Bundesliga title race. Two points separate Dortmund and fifth place Munchen Gladbach. That would have been an insane final day of the season. Bayern Munich have come away as DFB Pokal champions. And Paderborn have taken down Mainz and have won the relegation match to get promoted up to the Bundesliga. Atletico Madrid have beaten Barcelona to win an all-Spanish Champions League final. And it is SC Braga coming away as Europa League champions. So there we go, lads. We have kept our job. But we have been relegated down to the second division. I cannot remember the last time we got relegated in a rebuild. But as a first for everything, lads, now next season is just about bouncing back and getting ourselves our back, getting ourselves back up to the Bundesliga. I can't believe it. All right, kicking off season number two here, and we have decided to send Patrick Eras on a two-year loan move to Bournemouth. Also making an upgrade to the left-hand side of our midfield. The Felix Argu experiment is over, and we have signed Robin Hack here from Nuremberg, 20.9 million pounds to the German midfielder. I want to keep the growth of Felix Argu moving, however, so we've sent him on a two-year loan move to RB Salzburg. We have also decided to sell Ole Kalpa here, headed to Yeni Malatyaspor in the Turkish leagues for £960,000. Michael Zatera is also out of the club as well, off to FC Midland for £1.45 million. So obviously when you're in the second division, you don't have as much money to work with, but the addition of Hack to the starting 11 is going to be absolutely brilliant. Very hopeful with what we can do with him this season. And like I said earlier in season one, I'm really just hoping dynamic player potential gets into these lads we have a crazy season break a bunch of records and it benefits us in the long term maybe maybe this is the move long term maybe this is the the plan get relegated have a great season and then get dynamic player potential to work wonders we'll see if that theory works out though but i mean to be fair we've got a pretty strong side here heading into the second division pavlenka and rashika both growing quite nicely the rest of the squad getting up there but this is going to be a big season, this one. There we go, lads. Everything going according to plan so far. We currently find ourselves top of the Bundesliga 2 at the halfway point. Only the one loss. Eight points clear of Holstein Kiel, which is decent. Eight points clear is all we're after. As long as we get promoted back up to the top flight next year, I'm a happy camper. We are going to sign ourselves a free agent regen player, however. It is Christian 
Leguizamon. I'm just going to call him Christian. The Argentinian attacking midfielder joining us here on a free transfer. And that's as far as things are going to go here with Werder Bremen in season number two in terms of transfers. It's all about getting promoted. It's all about giving the guys in the starting 11 a good opportunity to grow and get dynamic player potential into them. So let's see if we are back up in the Bundesliga here with Werder Bremen in season two. Yes, we are. What a season, lads. Only the one loss for the entirety of the season as we finish 13 points clear of FC Mainz and have been promoted up to the Bundesliga once again. At the other end of the spectrum, however, it is uh, whatever that club is, <laughs> Dinamo Dresden and SVWW all in the relegation spots. Borussia Dortmund have won DFB Pokal this season. Hanover have won the relegation match, meaning they're not being relegated down to the second division. And SVWW have beaten Bayern Munich's second side to survive in the second division. Atletico Madrid go back to back and win the Champions League again. And it is Wolfsburg bringing the Europa League to the Germany divisions, to German football, as they beat Spurs 2-1 to win the Europa League. This is absolutely ridiculous. Roshika has gone up plus five overall this season and has got himself 24 goals and six assists. That is absolutely ridiculous. Oh my God. He was somebody I thought, okay, we might have to sell eventually. Not at this point, lads, not at this point. 86 rated playing in the second division. That's brilliant. But lads, there it is. We are headed up to the Bundesliga once again, back where we belong. Let's use this experience. Let's use this growth to really make sure that we survive the relegation battle this season. Beginning our second stint in the Bundesliga with a player departure. It is Ludwig Augustinson. Augustinson. There we go. I said it. I was breaking it down. I'm going to start breaking down these names. August Inson. Ludwig August Inson out of the club headed to Sporting for 21.8 million pounds. And it is a big addition to the right hand side of our midfield as Adamola Lukman, the beast himself as a Fulham fan. I've had my experience watching him play absolute weapon this man just don't let him take crucial penalties Lookman coming to Werder Bremen for 29.5 million pounds and it is Thor Jakobsen or Jacobson I'm just gonna call him Jakobsen for a bit of European flair he's headed to Rapid VN here for 1.2 million pounds Jonah Osabuti also out of the club headed to the Lanus for 1.45 million and Nicholas Schmidt headed to Fenerbahce for 2 million pounds the clean out continues we now have Lookman, so we no longer need Leonardo Bittencourt, sending him to Roma for 26 million pounds. I'll happily take that. And we do make a massive addition to the starting 11 here. It is the Ukrainian left back Vitaly Mikolenko joining us here at 38.9 million pounds to bring him across from Brighton and Hove Albion. Benjamin Gollard, the latest player to depart the club, however, headed to FC Utrecht. And we have decided to send Johan Mina on a two-year loan move to Gremio. Along with Mina leaving on loan, we've also sent Christian out on loan. He headed to Estudiantes. I'm having a shocker today, lads. He's off to South America on a loan. So there we go, lads. Just focusing on big additions to the starting 11, focusing on whatever the weakest links are, just improving on them and really laying foundations where if one aspect of the side is going well, then we'll keep it going well, but then we'll get other areas built up so they become bigger than them and just keep getting everything bigger and bigger and bigger. That's the uh, mind thought I've got right now. So Lukman and Mick Linko into the club. So this is the side we have to fight the relegation battle here in season three. And I've got to say it is significantly better than the side we had two years ago when we were in this same position. Fingers bloody crossed we're not even close to the relegation zone this year, but time will tell. Relegation battle? What's that? I don't, I don't know what that is. I, don't, I couldn't tell you, man. I couldn't tell you. We're coming bloody fifth in the Bundesliga here with Werder Bremen. 31 points. We're only seven points out of the title race. Let's bloody go, lads. We're closer to the first place Dortmund than we are eighth place Cologne. That is brilliant. Going to make a controversial player departure, however. Yuri Pavlenka is in his prime right now in terms of a goalkeeper. Maybe we could have held on to him for another year or so, but I have decided to cash in on the goalkeeper here. 50.2 million pounds to Wolverhampton, the Czech goalkeeper. Thank you very much for your service, mate. 
but we've got to think about long-term business. And there it is, lads. We get ourselves in a brand new starting 11 goalkeeper. It is the French goalkeeper, Mike Magnan, signing from Lille for £60 million on the dot. One overall less than Pavlenka, but surely he can be as high as Pavlenka by the end of this third season. So there we go, lads. A transfer window center focused on just goalkeepers. Fingers bloody crossed. The signing of Mike Magnan can get us into a Champions League spot. Cannot believe I'm saying that. Lads, we have gone from newly promoted to Champions League football. We have finished fourth here in the Bundesliga. Borussia Dortmund running away with the title this season. But we finished fourth in our return to the Bundesliga with Werder Bremen. And we'll be playing Champions League football in season four. Brilliant. At the other end of the spectrum, however, it is Paderborn, Hanover, and Freiburg all in the relegation spots. Paderborn not even winning a game all season. That is shocking. Bayern Munich have taken down Frankfurt this season, however, to win the DFB Pokal. And Freiburg have survived relegation. They have taken down Dusseldorf in the relegation playoff. Bayern Munich break Atletico Madrid's run of Champions League titles as they beat Liverpool on penalties. And it is Leon taking down Sevilla to win the Europa League. Robin Hack proving to be not even close to his last name, not even close to a hack. He is a weapon for us here. Robin Hack, 16 goals, eight assists. And my man has gone up plus five overall this season and is up to an 85. What a pickup he has proved to be. But there we go, lads. A dream return to life in the top flight of German football. We, 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 we finish in Champions League football here in the Bundesliga and have an incredible season four surely ahead of us. Let's go. All right. Patrick Eris has returned from his loan at Bournemouth and we've decided to immediately ship him out of the club on a permanent deal. He signs with AZ Alkmaar here for 2.4 million pounds. And Yanez Voller is headed to Moriense in the Portuguese league for 1.2 million pounds. Have also decided to part company with Johannes Eggstein, not Maximilian, it's Johannes, I assume they're related. I mean, they're both play for the same club, unless Eggstein is like the version of Smith or Jones in Germany. But Johannes Eggstein is headed to Bordeaux for 3.35 million pounds. We have also decided to part ways with Basuma. Slightly disappointed with the growth that he's had in this rebuild, but we've managed to get 40 million pounds for the midfielder, which I am more than happy for. And his replacement officially into the club, it is Danny Ceballos. The Spanish midfielder joining us on a permanent deal from Real Madrid for £60 million. Huge pickup. So there we go, lads. Sabios is a massive addition to the midfield. It's a plus five upgrade there on Basuma. And he's surely going to make the difference for us in the Bundesliga and potentially the Champions League this season. Surely. I mean, this is what the starting 11 looks like now. And the growth of Rashika has just taken me off guard absolutely taken me off guard. This man has been on absolute fire and is now 90 rated headed into this fourth season. Unbloody believable. The squad growing like, abs it's on, we're on fire. We are on absolute fire here. We're in the Champions League. I don't know what, I, I honestly don't know what to expect this season. Let's go check out our group. You know what? I'm not too worried by this group at all. I mean, there's some medium tier clubs. Leon are gonna be a challenge. Bill Bow, it's hard to say. Have they kept the basketball policy? Probably not, but I'm hopeful and quietly confident that we get out of this group. Let's just, let's suss it down anyways. Let's simulate this group and find out in three, two, oh one. There we go, lads. Bloody brilliant performance here in the Champions League group stage, but we've actually, so Bill Bow smashing Leon there. Leon, not even close. Ourselves and Bill Bow comfortably out of group C. We're into the round of 16 now. Who are we facing? Oh, dearie me, lads. We've got a massive challenge here in the round of 16. Really going to see what we're made of here as we have been drawn up against PSG. And honestly, things aren't going incredibly well in the Bundesliga. We are currently sitting fifth. Want to make sure we qualify for a Champions League spot again next season if we're unable to win it this season. Need to pick things up slightly in the second half of the season and get ourselves Champions League football. But let's go, lads. Mr. Rebuild, Manager of the Month, things you love to see. So I have done a piece of business that might come across as controversial. I wanted to go all out. We've received a 160 million pound offer for Josh Sargent, an offer 
that I dwelled over for quite a long time, but we have decided to accept it here. We can do so much business to the starting 11 with this. Josh Sargent headed to Liverpool for 160 million pounds. In response, lads, we have signed his replacement. It is a new striker. It is Anthony Martial coming to the Bundesliga. We have signed him from Barcelona for 94.4 million pounds. Welcome, Tony. We have also decided to sign a backup goalkeeper here in Florian Muller. Really need to build out the bench. Our starting 11, there's no denying that our starting 11 is cracked. It is great. But the bench is just shocking. So Florian Muller, backup goalkeeper into the club. And we have also decided to sign Yangel Herrera here. 51.7 million pounds for the Venezuelan midfielder. Signing him here from Southampton. Definitely a lot of money to spend on a rotational midfielder, but he's going to be fantastic, surely. So there we go, lads. The sale of Sargent has allowed us to finance a new and improved striker, plus a backup goalkeeper and a backup centre midfielder. Very, very happy with that. That's a busy January transfer window, but hopefully it's going to help us in progression in the Champions League knockout rounds. Here we go, fellas. Champions League knockout round time. We have the first leg against PSG. We are on the road, which I'm a big fan of. Need to get the away legs going first. And you guys know, we're searching for away goals on the board. So we're gonna quick sim this first leg here against PSG and the scoreline. It's a one-all draw. That's not too bad. That honestly isn't too bad at all. A one-all draw. We get an away goal there through Rashika. But I mean, I would have loved to get a few more away goals or at least have the lead, but We've got the narrow away goal lead. All right, lads, a very big second leg ahead of us here. We are back at home, back in Germany, and have PSG traveling to take us on. A clean sheet gets us through. Even if it's a nil-nil draw, we go through on away goals rule, but I'd love to get a big result here. If PSG score, we're in a bit of strife. Anyways, we're gonna quick simulate the second leg here, and the scoreline is going to be a two. Nil victory. Let's go, lads. We've taken down PSG. We're through to the quarterfinals. That fills me with a little bit of confidence. Another monster, monster challenge for us here, though. I mean, every side alive in the quarterfinals are quite good sides. But we have been drawn up to face bloody Barcelona here in the Champions League quarterfinals. Come on, man. All right, lads. The first leg is away from home here at the Camp Nou. Like I said, like we've been getting lucky with the FIFA gods by the fact that we've been given these away legs first. It helped us out in the first leg against PSG. Let's hope it can help us out again here against Barcelona as we are going to quick simulate the first leg and the scoreline. It's 2-0. It's a 2-0 loss. Messi getting a goal there for them. That is not ideal at all. And the worst thing is that we don't have an away goal. I would have loved, like I would have rather lose 3-1 and had the away goal compared to 2-0. But it is what it is. We're in a bit of strife here. It's going to have to be a minor miracle here for us, lads, in the second leg as we are facing Barcelona at home. A 2-0 win would send this to extra time. We need to keep a clean sheet, though. If Barcelona score even one goal, that is virtually a huge advantage for them. That means we'd have to score, like, four goals. So we're going to quick sim the second leg here. We're out. We are out, lads. Two all draw. 4-2 on aggregate. We are out of the Champions League here in the quarterfinals. We had a good run, lads, but yeah, you can just tell. Barcelona, just that extra level ahead of us, man. We've missed out on a Bundesliga title here with Werder Bremen by one point. One bloody point. As we finish second in the Bundesliga this season, we've qualified for the Champions League, but bloody hell, it would have been nice to get a Bundesliga title. At the other end of the table, however, Union Berlin, FC Cologne, and Hamburg all in the relegation spots. Leipzig have come away as DFB Pokal champions, and it is Holstein Kiel defeating Union Berlin and getting promoted up to the Bundesliga. Something that fills me with a little bit of confidence is the fact that we lost to Barcelona and they ended up going on to win the Champions League this season on penalties ahead of Atletico Madrid. And in the Europa League, it was Liverpool taking down Leon to win the Europa League. Dude, what is going on with Milo Rashica? The Kosovian, Kosovo, Koso, Kosovian, Kosovoni, I don't know. The man from Kosovo is 94 rated. A 
man has scored 33 goals and got himself 10 assists. That is absolutely off the rails there. Jesus Christ. But there we go, lads. Season 4 done and dusted here at Werder Bremen. So close to a Bundesliga title. So close to the Champions League semi-finals, I guess. Just so close to success in everything. We're going to crack on in Season 5 and just take that next step. Yeah, I, can, uh, I can hold my hands up high and say maybe I stuffed up. Remember when we sold Josh Sargent to Liverpool halfway through last season? Well, yeah. Between January and now, in six months, Josh Sargent has somehow gone from an 85 rated striker to 98 overall at Liverpool. What the hell are you feeding him, Jurgen Klopp? He's definitely in the back room there getting some weird injections because my man's has gone up 13 overall in six months. What the fuck? Anyways, I'll try to remain calm. We've made a transfer here for a backup striker, Carlos Fernandez, joining us here for 30, well, sorry, 40.6 million pounds from Frankfurt. We have also decided to sign Joachim Anderson here, the Danish centre-back, joining us from Schalke for 28 million pounds. And Alexi Miranchuk joining us for 38.9 million pounds from Sheffield United to be our new backup attacking midfielder. So there we go, lads. A window focused specifically on building out the bench. Like I said, I really love having the insurance options. I love having a strong bench as long as a strong, along with a strong starting 11. Very happy with those pieces of business though. Let's go take a look at the starting 11. As you can see, the side is very, very balanced there. The only issue that I'm a little bit worried about is in the defense with Utakai. He's at an 85 overall. Gonna potentially look to change him around come January, but again, that's really gonna come down to our position in the league, in the Champions League, and the growth of him. If he grows quite nicely, then I might not bother with it. But at the moment, Utica is probably the next name on the cho chopping block. But Hack, Eckstein, and Rashika, and Magna as well, all into the 90s. There's a fair chance we're going to have more than half the squad hit the 90s this season. Absolutely mental stuff. We have been drawn into Group C of the Champions League again this season. This year, however, we have an easier group than last year. It's Inter Milan, CSKA Moscow, and Club Bruges. And there is no real surprises to see. We have absolutely wiped the floor with this group here. We end up going undefeated in the Champions League group stages. Only three goals conceded, 16 points overall. Ourselves and Inter Milan are back into the knockout rounds. I'm happy with that, but honestly, I expected it all around. But again, the round of 16 is always bloody challenging for us. I feel like I always get stitched up in the round of 16. We've been drawn up against Manchester City. And at this stage of the season, however, it does seem to be a two-horse race for the Bundesliga title between ourselves and Borussia Dortmund. Really want to win the Bundesliga title here. This season looks like our best opportunity so far. But like I've said before, the biggest goal is just qualification once again to next year's Champions League. So Utakai has had some decent growth here and is up to an 87 overall now. So I have decided against selling him and upgrading at the center back spot. Going to keep him in the starting 11 there. So we have done no business here in the January transfer window. Very interested to see if we can go all the way, all the way with this Werder Bremen side or not. So let's jump into it. The round of 16 of the Champions League as we take on Manchester City. All right, getting into the knockout rounds. Once again, here we go. Taking on Man City away at the Etihad to kick off the knockout rounds for this fifth season. You guys know the goal is to get away goals on the board as we quick sim the first leg. We get an away goal next to our name. It is a 1-0 win over Man City. Only a narrow lead, but it's a lead nonetheless. All right, lads, we have the advantage here against Manchester City as we head into the second leg at home here. Looking to get ourselves back to the Champions League quarterfinals for the second successive season. We have the lead. Our future is in our hands. As we quick sim the second leg, we find ourselves through to the Champions League quarterfinals. 2-1, making it 3-1 on aggregate. Beautiful stuff. Rashika and Martial stepping up. Last year in the quarterfinals, we got drawn up against Barcelona. This year, we have to do the other side of El Clasico. 
as we have been drawn up against Real Madrid. But again, the FIFA gods blessing us here to kick off these quarterfinal clashes. We have the away leg up first. I mean, we had the away leg up first, I believe, against Barcelona, and we still didn't get through out of that. But it's a chance for us to rewrite history for ourselves. The first leg away at the Santiago Bernabeu is going to conclude as a 3-0 th three, three win. Okay. Oh, bloody K. I will happily accept that. We have taken down Werder Bremen. We're taking down Real Madrid. 3-0 here. Mikalinko, Rashika, and Hack. Oh, my God. It's three away goals as well. Bloody. Yeah, nice. So, we find ourselves in an absolutely golden position here to get over the hurdle and get ourselves into the Champions League semi-finals. It is Real Madrid at home. Please do not bottle this. The scoreline, I'm afraid to look, is a 2-0 win. Thank the bloody stars. Thank you, FIFA gods. I would have been so bloody worried if we bottled that. But we are through to the Champions League semi-finals with absolute comfort. 5-0. So here we go, lads. The semi-finals of the Champions League for season number five. And we have been drawn up against the side we have experience against in PSG. The side that we eliminated in last year's round of 16. That makes me hopeful because our side is significantly stronger this year than it was last year. And we got the job against PSG done last year. So fingers crossed we can re we can repeat history here beat PSG and get ourselves through a Champions League final to face either Inter or Juve. Okay, semi-final time, baby. Let's go, show time. So, we have the first leg here. It's away from home. We've got the away leg first. You guys know the objective? Away goals. I'm actually like, I don't know why I'm like nervous about this. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm nervous. Champions League semi-finals, treating it like it's bloody real life. But we're gonna jump into it here. The first leg on the road at the Parc des Princes. And the scoreline is a 3-1 win. Holy shit. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Rashika, you are an absolute animal, mate. Dead set machine. We are in a golden position here to qualify for the final. Oh, for fucks. Everything is going to plan except for this. Felix Utakai has done his MCL and is out for four months. That is the season done for Felix Yudekai. Maybe that's a sign from the universe, from the FIFA gods, that we should have upgraded in January. So here we go, lads. Heading in to the second leg here, slightly down on troops. Joachim Anderson coming into the starting 11, as you can see, replacing Yudekai, who is out for the rest of the season. Thank God we gave ourselves such a strong lead heading in to the second leg, but we're going to quick sim it here for a spot in the Champions League final. The scoreline is a 3-1 win. No Unikai, no problems. We go through to the Champions League final to face either Inter or Juve. 6-2 on aggregate. Come on, Werder Bremen. Let's go. So, in the Champions League final, it is going to be Juventus versus Werder Bremen. Let's go, lads. A huge, huge challenge. Taking a look around the other competitions. Benfica take down Bayern Munich to win the Europa League. We have fallen off significantly in the second half of the season, however, in the Bundesliga, finishing 10 points away from Dortmund. Dortmund have just been absolutely cracked during this rebuild. So... We're not winning the Bundesliga this season, but at least we have qualified for the Champions League. At the other end of the table, however, it is Holstein, Hanover, and Paderborn all in the relegation spots. But at least we got our hands on some silverware here. We have won DFB Pokal 2-1 over Frankfurt. I believe Frankfurt are one of our rivals, so that's brilliant. But we've won the DFB Pokal this season. Great stuff. The promotion playoff final, however, has not been played yet as... We are at that time of the season. But lads, this is a look at our squad ahead of the Champions League final. Absolutely stoked with how things have gone in terms of growing the squad so far. Still remains to be seen whether this squad is capable of winning the Champions League here for us. But I honestly think being relegated was the best thing for this squad, especially players like Rashika that have just had dynamic play potential, possess the shit out of them and turn them into some of the best players in the world. But I'm so excited to see what we can do here as we face 
Juventus. Can we get it done? Can we bring a Champions League title here to Werder Bremen? We're going to have to wait and see. Champions League final, Werder Bremen, Juventus. Let's have at it. Here we go, lads. The moment of truth at Wembley Stadium. Let's take down Juve and become Champions League winners here with Werder Bremen. Nice throw in there. Come on, lads. Good run down the line there from the Mexican. Sanchez, ball across. We've got to get to that one. Get a corner at least. No, they've headed it back, but they've overhit it there. Lookman. Going to Eggstein. Eggstein to Martial. Martial, great run there from Robin Hack. Robin Hack's going to give us the lead. Let's go. Brilliant stuff. What a goal. What a start to the Champions League final. Robin Hack, we're 1-0 up against Juve. That was such a satisfying goal to score. Defend, got to get in front of it here. Yes, good stuff from Ceballos. Win that. Fuck. Pigs on the front here. Puey going to Cristiano Ronaldo, just covering the... Oh, my! Ronaldo's banged it in at the near post. That is so shit. Cristiano Ronaldo has equalized there for Juventus. That is such a bad goal to concede. Oh, let's go in here. Eggstein, we've got a nice little numbers advantage here. Look at the run being made there. Martial going to Rashika. Rashika going back. Oh, I stuffed that up. I should have gone. Just cut around for fuck's sake. Ah, tried to do too much there. I tried to skill my way into it. Now Juve are on the attack there. They might have a counter. Close that angle down. Puig. No, I shouldn't have lunged in there. Now I've got to cover. Good. No. Still out to them. Defend. Defend, defend, defend. No. No. Oh, they're in the post. Just get rid of it. Good block. Oh, my God. This is making me anxious, man. Juve are just killing it. Guerrero. Good tackle, Jorge. Maybe a counter-attack opportunity. Eggstein. I do see that run from Martial. Please, Martial, stroke of half-time. Martial, Militao's giving him a bit of space. Martial is going to square it. Eggstein! I thought we bottled it again with the squaring. But it is the captain, Maximilian Eggstein, giving us the lead on the stroke of half-time. Unconventional fashion. and Unconventional fashion, but we have the lead. Come on, lads. This is nice play here. I see that. Yes, he's got in front of him. Lookman. Adamola. Going to Rashika. Rashika through. Martial. It's a beautiful ball. And that's a beautiful finish. We have the lead. 63rd minute. Our lead is doubled here. We have a 3-1 advantage in the Champions League final. What a dream start to the second half. Tony Martial. He comes from France. He's got to defend here. Still a little bit of time. A little bit of time for you, though. We need to defend on this, though. Arthur. Just jockeying. Just jockeying. I'm just spamming that X button. Just trying to keep my space. Just defending, just defending, just defending! Oh my god! Juve's got their way back into this game. Ten minutes to go. I mean, please, waste all the time you can by celebrating. Don't go pick up the ball or anything. There it is! Oh, we soak up the pressure. But we have held on here. And we have won the rebuild today with Werder Bremen, lads. What a journey. Relegations, promotions, just 
It all happened in today's rebuild, but lads, if you enjoyed it with Werner Bremen, make sure you leave a like on the video. Scorpion, kick that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. I will see you for the next one very soon. It has been Jared HD here. I'm out. Peace.